Systems of inequalities. Start with the first one on your sheet. And we're going to graph a very basic inequality. Y is less than negative 1. So Y is less than negative 1. Vertical line, horizontal line. Which one is it? Horizontal line. Where do we want our horizontal line? At negative 1. Here's negative 1. If we choose it, we can make them by halves or whatever. But most people are going to put their first point at negative 1. Now, we know it's a less than symbol. So do I want a solid line or a dashed line? Dashed. So I'm dashing my line. If it was less than or equal to, I would make a solid line. Okay? Then the next thing we have to do is decide which way to shade. I always think about less than. It's made with my left hand. So I want to go below there. To be sure, you can plot a point. We can plot the point negative 2, negative 2 is negative 2 less than negative 1. Yes, so we're shading down. Okay. The next example is not much different. Only instead of a single variable, we now have two variables. And what is this? If this was y equals x squared plus 1, you would graph a quadratic, a parabola, shift it up 1, wouldn't you? We have an equals here, so we can make a solid parabola. So I'm going to start out at my vertex of 0, 1. This is x minus 0 squared plus 1. 0, 1. When I'm one point to the right, because A is 1, I'm going to be 1 up. Line of symmetry is the y-axis. When I'm two points away, I will be, or two steps away from my vertex, I'll be 4 up. 2 squared is 4. 3 steps away, 3 squared is 9. So I have my parabola. I'm going to make it solid because of the equal to. Now I just have to decide which way to shade. I'm going to put a point in there. What's the easiest point to put in there? The origin, 0, 0. So is 0 less than or equal to 0 plus 1? Yes, 0 is less than 1. So which way do we shade? Toward the 0, we want to shade outside. Because 0, 0 made that true. <laughs> Saving your time. Okay, next one. Sketch the graph of 2x minus y is less, is greater than or equal to 3. How do you want to tackle that one? We want to get our y equals mx plus b, don't we? Because it's easy to plot a point of an equation when it's in slope y intercept form. So taking away the 2x from both sides, negative y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 3. What do I have to do with a negative y? Good. You guys know this stuff. When I divide by a negative y, or a negative 1, I'm going to divide everybody else by a negative 1, and that changes my inequality. So it will no longer be greater than, it will be y is less than or equal to positive 2x minus 3. So where do I go to graph this? Negative 3, at my B, my beginning point, when X is gone, Y is a negative 3. So I'm going down to negative 3, my Y intercept. How much am I rising and running? Up 2 over 1, rising 2, running 1, rising 2, running 1. Solid or dashed line? Solid line. 
so I make my solid line. If I have a ruler, I do a much better job. And now I want to try a point to see which way to shade. The origin makes sense. We didn't cross it so or go through it, so let's try the origin. 0 for y less than or equal to 2 times 0 minus 3 is 0 less than or equal to negative 3. No, so we don't want the origin as one of our points. We're shading below. Am I going too fast? Is everybody okay? All right, now, here's where it gets interesting. This was Algebra 2 stuff. Now we're in pre-calc. Okay? We are to sketch the graph of the following system of inequality. So we have x minus y is less than or equal to 4. 3x plus y is less than or equal to 2. And x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So what do we do to the first equation? Good. Put it into y, slope y-intercept form. So negative y less than or equal to, by bringing the x to the, si to the other side, it doesn't change the inequality. It's when we divide by that negative that it changes the inequality. So when I divide by a negative 1, I will get y is greater than or equal to x minus 4. Starting at negative 4, that's my y-intercept, where I cross the y-axis. Understood slope here is 1 over 1, rising 1, running 1, rising 1, running 1. Falling one, left one. Solid or dashed line? Solid. We'll worry about the shading in just a moment. Okay? So we don't get every get everything too messy. Okay? Second line. 3x plus y less than or equal to 2. So y will be less than or equal to a negative 3x plus 2. A positive y this time, and we don't have to do anything to the inequality. We just brought the 3x to the other side. Beginning point, my b, my y-intercept, is 2. This time, my slope is negative 3. Falling 3, running 1. Falling 3 running 1, falling 3, running 1. Very steep slope. Solid or dashed? Again, we'll shade in just a moment. Last one. X is greater than a negative 1. Vertical or horizontal line? Vertical line. Solid or dashed? So we're at, going to be at negative 1 for X. Dashed line. So now we're ready to think about shading. Where is x going to be bigger than a negative 1? On the right side. So just draw a little arrow to remind yourself you're shading that way. Where is y going to be bigger than or equal to x minus 4? above the blue line. It's growing above the blue line. So we're going to shade in this 
direction for the Y or for the blue line. And the last one, where is Y smaller than or equal to the negative 3X plus 2, the red line? Below. So we're going to go this way. So which portion of the graph is going to be contained by all three of those lines? That little triangle. So that's the part that we're shading. You could use colored pencils to lightly shade each one of them, but what we're interested in is where do the three overlap? Okay. So what are the vertices of these three of this triangle. Eventually we'll ask, ask you to find those. So this is when x is negative 1, what's the red? Negative 1. I'll do this in red. Yep. When x is negative 1, We'll be at 5, won't we? So at negative 1, 5, we have a vertex. Okay, what's the blue line when x is negative 1? y will be equal to negative 1 minus 4, negative 5, right? This one intersects at negative 1, negative 5. And then what's our other one? Where do red and blue cross? Not a nice number, is it? Red and blue are going to cross. Well, when y equals y, then we'll have a negative x plus 4 equals negative 3x plus 2. So I'm going to bring the 3x to the other side. If I add 3x, I'll have 2x. If I subtract 4, I'll get negative 2. So x is a negative 1. And that doesn't seem right. What did I do wrong? It looks like it's got to be positive. Negative x plus 4 equals negative 3x plus 2. Adding 3x to both sides, I'll get 2x. Subtracting 4, I'll get a negative 2 with a negative 3x. So when I bring that negative 3x to the side, adding 3x to both sides, I get a positive 2x. Okay, maybe my graph was just wrong. Because we want to find this third place, this third point where these two guys intersect. That third vertex. So it'll be important next chapter or next section to be able to find those. And I make, I'm making some silly mistake. y equals y. It was x minus 4. Thank you. I was looking at the wrong equation. So I have a positive x and a positive 3x is going to be 4x. When I subtract 4 from both sides, I will have... Or Adding 4 to both sides, I'll get 6. So 4x equals 6. So x will be 3 halves. That makes more sense, 1 and a half. And then we could plug it back in to find out what the y-coordinate is. Okay, let's look at the next one. Sketch the graph and label the, the solution's vertices. Okay. First one's linear again, right? So get the y by itself. y will be less than or equal to negative x plus 1. Okay. At 1, we're falling 1, running 1. Falling 1, running 1. Solid or, or dashed line? Solid. Then our second one is not quite quadratic, is it? 
What's this going to be? Square root. Yep. Half a parabola, sideways. So, negative y, a different color. Negative y squared greater than negative x minus 5, dividing by a negative y squared less than positive x plus 5, taking the square root y less than the square root of x plus 5. Thank you. It was supposed to be negative. I made a positive slope. Thank you. You had it right. See, it happens. My fault. I was happy to get the negative one, and then I went the wrong way down. It should be negative 1 plus 1. Third time's a charm. Going downhill. Way to catch me. <laughs> the simplest lines are the hardest, aren't they? <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so here we go. What are we going to do with this guy? Good. We're going to move it to the left 5. It's a square root. Move to the left 5. So we want to have a point at 0, negative 5. So I don't make a mistake again. And then when you move 1 to the right, the square root of 1 more is 1. We have to move 4 over to get to 2. And 9 over to get to 3. Okay? You have to be 9. So you have to, if you're 1 step over, the square root of 1 step is going to be 1. But if you move 4 steps over, what's the square root of 4? If you move nine steps over total, you're going to be square root of nine is three. Okay. Sixteen steps over would get us four up. Solid or dashed? Dashed. So now we have to figure out which way to shade. Red line, we're going to be smaller than the line. Shading which way? Down. Blue line, we're going to be smaller than the square root. Down, right? So where will they intersect? It won't be a bounded graph, will it? So we're going to be shading this way. But it's not a bounded graph because we have a starting point here. So there's no ba complete utter boundaries. And when we're looking for the vertices, we really only have one vertex, don't we? That point right there. Negative 1, 2. All right, you guys okay, or do you want to see another example of linear? Two lines. Everybody's okay? I want to take a lot of time when we can talk about these. Story problem. You worked with the the
to find demand problems, right? To find that equilibrium point. Okay, those equilibrium points tell us where's the where's the sweet spot. How much how much can we charge for customers and still have enough product to sell? Okay, the consumer and pro and producer surplus says sometimes we have a surplus. The amount of consumers who'd be willing to pay more than what we're actually charging for it. And the producer surplus is the amount that the producer is willing to sacrifice. How much less can they charge and still make a profit to be able to sell it? Make sense? So when you think about your iPhone, they, ha they have to do this analysis and say, how much is a customer willing to spend on a new iPhone? And how much are we willing to discount it? Now, I, actually, iPhone's not a very good example because they don't discount, do they? Until they bring a new new model out, and usually it's a hundred dollars off. Okay, but things work that way. So we want to find the consumer surplus and producer surplus for the demand and surplus equations. So when we say P is equal to 81 minus 0 0.055x, okay, this is the amount that we're wanting to sell it for, and this is how much we're willing to discount it. So this is your producer. Equation. Okay, this is the consumer equation. Okay. So the producer is willing to have a less than or equal to this, right? Consumer is willing to pay more than that. Okay. So when we're graphing something like this, we're going to graph P less than or equal to 81 minus 0 0.055x. And we're going to graph P is greater than 0.125x. But first we need to find that equilibrium point. How do we find the equilibrium point? last section. Yes, sir. Set them equal. So we're going to make 81 minus 0 0.055x equal to 0.125x. I'm going to bring the add 0.055x to both sides. And I'll get 81 is equal to what is 0.125x plus 0.055x, 1716? Is it 0.16? 0.18x. Okay, taking 81 divided by 0.18. So when x equals 450, we've got an equilibrium point. It's going to be a vertical line that we're going to be shading. Okay. This guy is up at 81, right? This one's at 0. So we're only interested in our axis looking like this. We're not selling negative products. They're not. We're not giving away our products for and giving them money. So we're only interested in this first quadrant. All right. So when we graph this guy, we need an x is equal to 450. We're going to be up here at 81. This guy is shading this way. This guy is shading down this way. 
and we'll have a, a line at 450. So 100, 200, 300, and 400. There's our equilibrium line. Both of these lines intersect that, don't they? Right? Because we found out, set them equal, find out where they intersect. So if we're up here at 81 for one of them, 10, 20, 30, 40, we're going to have to do them by 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. One line's going to go from 81 diagonal to that point. The other one is going to go, has a uh, y-intercept of 0. Actually, we got to find out what that point is. When we put this uh, 450 back in, what is 0 0.125 times 450? That's what I'm missing. Okay, so 56.25 and 20, 30, 40, 50. I messed up on that. 56.25. That's the line we want. So this is the line we want. This one's going to go through this line at this point. And this one's going to start out at 0 and go through this point. And we want a horizontal line here. So this is what people are willing to pay above and beyond. right? And this is how much the person is willing to discount. Key is to find that that equilibrium point. Then you don't have to worry about those crazy nasty slopes. And this is what it looks like graphing Desmos. Maybe. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Um, it should be solid. I was just wanting to get a, a mark, a, a place to put it. Yep. And the, the whole most important point then is this 450, 56, 25. Because that's where those other two lines are going to intersect. And that's what it looked like on Desmos. All right, last example. Nutritionist, do you think about going into the industry, food industry or work for um, in geriatrics where you're working in a, in a nursing home and people need to have certain meals um, to help boost their iron, their calcium, and so forth kind of content? Or if you're working with young children who have some sort of disability, but they don't digest things properly and they need to have their... their um, you know, their nutrition supplemented in some way. Hospitals, all kinds of places that would do this. Then you would deal with something like this. You become kind of a chemist of foods. We're looking for a supplement from food X and food Y. Strawberries and oranges or something like that. How much, to put, how much of each to put in a smoothie to make it much more palatable for this child. So we want 20 units of calcium, 15 of iron, and... 10 of vitamin B, so we may be talking about milligrams, okay, is kind of what we typically do. Food Y has 10 units of calcium, 10 of iron, and 20 of vitamin B per ounce. 
So we want the minimum daily requirements to be 280 of calcium, 160 of iron, and 180 of vitamin B. Okay. So we're looking at food X having 20 of calcium. And what else do we know about calcium? Food Y has 10 of calcium. And how much calcium are they supposed to get all together? 280. Food X has 15 of iron. Food Y has 10 iron. How much iron are they supposed to get all together? 160. And food X has how much vitamin B? 10. Food Y has how much vitamin B? And how much vitamin B do they need total? Could be a nutritionist for a zoo as well and deciding how much food to balance for a sick uh, zoo animal. Okay. Going to graph that, right, to figure out what it is. Now, do we want exactly 280 for the calcium? Has to be not exactly, but at least a minimum of, right? So greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to. And y will be greater than or equal to negative 20x plus 280. So y will be greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 28. And y greater than or equal to negative 15x plus 160, so y greater than or equal to negative 1.5x plus 16. And finally, 20y greater than or equal to negative 10x plus 180, so y greater than or equal to negative one half plus nine. Now we have simple lines that we can graph. Figure out where they overlap and you've got your combination. Okay. Assignments on your notes sheet.